Hello guys and welcome, it is that SRB2 dude here today bringing you yet another Splatoon 2 video. Today we're going to be going through the patch comparisons from version 4.0 to version 4.1. It's not too many patch notes to go over so this should be fairly brief and afterwards I shall give you guys my overall thoughts of what I think about version 4.1. So without further ado, let's get into it. So starting with the Splushomatic, the Splattershot Jr and the Aerospray. With all three of these weapons, when shots hit, their ink splatter will now extend further forward than it previously did. Basically, with these three weapons, they all paint a little bit further than they did before. For the Splattershot Pro, ink is now more likely to land around the player's feet when firing. For the 96 scale, there has been an extended range while firing by roughly 6%. As you can see in the version 4.1 update, I am able to hit the dummy much further than I did before. For the Dynamo Roller, ink will now also turf closer to the player in addition to previous ink coverage when performing a horizontal swing. For the Flingzer Roller, there has been an extended range in which horizontal swings will deal 100 damage or more damage by roughly 5%. For the Goo Tuber, there has been increased firing range of non-fully charged shots by roughly 27%. For the Mini Splatling, Ink Splatter from fired shots now hit the floor with a wider vertical spread than it previously did. For the Nautilus 47, there has been increased velocity of fired shots by roughly 133% while making no changes to the firing range. For the Undercover Umbrella, while damage from a single shot remains at 40, the damage from Peripheral Ink Splatter has increased from 10 damage to 12 damage. For Splash Wolves, there has now been decreased time for when ink recovery begins by roughly 15 frames. This is basically a quarter of a second. For Tenta Missiles, there has now been a shortened time between firing of each missile. There is no specific of it, but as you can see in the version 4.1 example, I tend to actually end my Tenta Missiles much faster. And lastly for Splashdown, if you were to be shot out of the sky while using this special, you will now only lose 25% of your special gauge instead of 50%. There has now also been increased damage dealt to specifically bubbles to ensure that they get destroyed on impact. Also, for a majority of weapons that have this special, there has been decreases of points required to get Splashdown. So that is pretty much all the patch notes that we have received for version 4.1. Now I'm going to give you guys my opinions and thoughts of what I think about all the changes that we have received now first of all I don't want to bore you too much with I guess a whole statement about each and every single patch note that was there because notably a bunch of them were just painting bus for I guess the Splusher Matic, the Splash Up Junior, Aerospray, Splash Up Pro, Dynamo Roller and Mini Splatling. Now out of those six weapons, two of them I would like to mention like the Splash Up Pro and Dynamo Roller. Splash Up Pro has been a weapon that has always struggled with I guess holding its own and being able to paint around its feet. This is basically a patch to fix that and allow it to fight or stay in battles a little bit better. Do I think it's completely game changing? Not at all, because playing it from, I guess, the last two days, it feels definitely does feel better. But in terms of general fighting and overall ink coverage that it does uh, output, it's still not up to par with other weapons like the custom dually squelches or basically a bunch of other weapons in the game, really. The Dynamo Roller I would like to mention, though, as this weapon in particular has struggled so much through, I guess, the year of it being in Splatoon 2 because it has not been able to paint and not been the same Dynamo that we all knew and love from Splatoon 1. But now, I can definitely say that this Dynamo Roller that we have now paint so much more it's not quite splatoon one standard i just gotta mention that it's not quite there but it's very very close so i won't be surprised to see a larger rise in dino rollers mainly used as a support weapon just to paint up areas and such like that if they were to make this weapon perfect now or if it, this weapon needed any other buffs it would just be the vertical flick being slightly faster than it already is other than that, I think the Dynamo Roller right now, completely solid. Really, really solid weapon. And I look forward to seeing more play from this. Now, I want to mention the 96 gal as it does have extended fire range by roughly 6%. Now, why I love this so much is mainly because now it outranges most 
uh, midline weapons in the game. So it outranges the Spider Shop Pro, outranges Custom Dually Squelcher, outranges the H3 Nozzle Nose, outranges the Gluga Dualies. It basically outranges the majority of midline weapons. I think the range of it is around the same as the Squeezer right now. If not, maybe slightly less than it, but it's it's but they're both very, very close to each other. So 96 as a solid midline weapon. I definitely could see it being used a little bit more. I see the regular one being used a little bit more, considering from the last patch that we received that uh, the 96 had a painting buff. So it's not a bad option to get armor really fast, considering you also do have a sprinkler. And getting armor in the first place with that particular weapon doesn't take too much ink. Again, another midline weapon that I feel like that wasn't completely in the meta could make a rise just cause of this. Now the Flings of Roller of course got a buff, but personally I don't think it's that noticeable, so I'm just going to leave it there. The Undercover Brella also got a buff to a point where I don't feel like people understand what the buff really does. So it's 10 damage to 12 damage for peripheral hits, or peripheral ink splatter, however you guys want to call it. Now the Undercover Brella has four projectiles when it fires, so if all four projectiles hit, Previously before it was 40 and now it is also it is also 40. But basically it could have been a thing where maybe three projectiles hit or maybe two. And then previously before that it was basically 10, 20 and 30. But now it's going to be 12, 24 and 36. Now previously, of course, if you do 30 damage per hit, it's going to be a four shot kill. But if you're doing 36 per hit, it's going to be a three shot kill. So basically it makes the undercover brella more consistent in damage output. So you can basically miss one projectile and still get a three shot kill with the weapon. So all in all, it's a pretty decent buff. I'm not too sure if there's going to be a rise in the weapon considering the, I guess the shield is still so weak. But now the weapon does kill uh, more consistently than it did before. So it's definitely a nice buff overall. The GooTuber also got a buff, which I think people are kind of sleeping on at this point of time. Mainly because, yes, you got 27 extra range for non-fully charged shots. But have you gone into the testing room and just go, I guess, strafed back and forth and just basically spam the trigger? The first thing you're going to notice is the amount of ink coverage that you can now output while just using the GooTuber. So, so it's definitely going to be one of those charges that can paint very, very consistently. And also because it's now got a 27% uh, extended range for non-charged shots, it's 70% charge can now kill at further ranges. So definitely some nice buffs to the GooTuber. Will we see it in competitive? Not too sure, but I definitely feel like some person will be out there that could possibly push this to a level where it becomes competitive. But who knows, really? I'm just kind of speaking from what I think. The Splash Shield's a really nice buff. It helps weapons like Blob Blobber, 96 Gal, and uh, Rapid Pro Deco to be able to recover ink faster. So pretty much all I got to say about that. It's nice buff. Tenta Missiles, there's no real change with it. So I'm just going to skip it. And the overall Splashdown buff. Do I think it's amazing? It's just okay by my standards, I guess. Do I think people are going to use Splashdown more because of it? Probably not, but maybe as well. It's definitely a special that can now be spammed a little bit more. And it mainly is because people learn how to kill Splashdowns out of the air much easier than ever before. So at this point, it's just like, well, when someone has Splashdown, people were really, really scared to use it. So. I guess what Nintendo is allowing people to do is to spam it a little bit more because they have decreased a bunch of weapons that have had special. I mean, Splushomatic has gone from 170 to 160. 96 Gal has gone from 180 to 170. Inkbrush has gone down by 160 to 150 ink, which is the lowest amount of ink I've ever seen. Uh, Hydra Spatling has gone down from 190 to 170. Undercover Brella has also gone down to 150. I think the only one that didn't get touched was actually the Splatter Shot that uh, has splashed down. So it's very, very interesting that that didn't get changed at all. But basically at this point, Splashdown is considered very, very weak. I feel like people don't really utilize it too well when, I guess, coming in from super jumps. I feel like at this point, it's one of the best ways to do it. Like just put some stealth jump on and have Splashdown. It can work wonders, really. I guess now also it can be a really good counter uh, for bubbles at this point. And you're mainly gonna see bubbles in uh, game modes like, uh, I guess, Clam Blitz or something like that, or any, if anybody uses bubbles, really. I mean, mainly Clam Blitz because if you see bubbles being deployed in your own base or something, you can basically just use a Splashdown and it gets rid of the bubbles. Maybe something worth considering in that type of play, but really, who knows at this point? Now, talking a little bit more about the special gauge stuff, 
Splat charges in general, I mean the splat charger, splatter scope, fire fin, and fire fin splatter scope. They've all gone up by 10, so the splat charger and splatter scope are now 200 ink for the stingray. The fire fin splatter scope is now uh, at 210. And honestly, I don't really feel like that hurts uh, these two weapons too much still. Because if you're using the splat charger right, like if you're fully charging your shots and then shooting the majority of the time, you're going to get special pretty fast. As long as like you're painting over the enemy's ink and I guess uninked areas. So definitely I don't even feel like that's too much of a problem. For the M. Perry dualies and the Cancer dualies now, the M. Perry dualies have gone from 200 to 220, which... Thank you very much. It gets rid of the inkjet spam because M. Perry Dooley is very much known for getting inkjets too fast, really. Uh, the Cancer Spat Dooley's as well got nerfed in the sense of that it's now 210. Definitely saw that coming because basically the Dooley class, they get their specials very, very fast. I mean, apart from like, I guess, the Gluga Dooley's, but especially the regular Splat Dooley's because they get their special faster than any other weapon in the game because you can kind of just roll, you... Just go in turret mode and you just paint around and you get your special just easily like that. So these are definitely some fair buffs. Do I feel like it's going to, I guess, shoot out of the meta? I mean, no. Maybe some people might consider using Tentatex Splatter Shop a little bit more considering it requires less ink to actually get their ink jet. Apart from, I guess, the Empery Dooleys now, which is like 220. But I don't feel like the regular Dooleys are going to come out of the meta because of that. Because the weapon in general is still really strong. And takes quite a bit of skill to actually use in the first place. So, And pretty much that is all my thoughts. That is pretty much all my thoughts of what I think is going to rise. No declines, funny enough. Like, nothing's being, like, I guess, nerfed to the ground to where you can't really use it too much. So, honestly... It's a pretty good patch. I mean, that's that's also good. It's really good to see when you have, uh, I guess, a bunch of different weapons that can be used within the meta, and you know, you know, a variety of meta is always good. I think you know, it just brings out a lot of different uh, creative things that you can see in a competitive game. So, I look forward to seeing what people bring out in the version 4.1 patch. Let me know what you guys think of the patch. If any weapons in the game got nerfed to the ground and you used it in particular, let me know your feelings, how are your thoughts? Do you feel like you can deal with it? Personally, I mean, I I'm unaffected really, so it's all good. Anyways, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please, if you did enjoy this video, please like, favorite, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Follow me on Twitter and Twitch, both in the description below. Do it for both of you if you're generous. As always, guys, this has been that SRB2 dude, and I shall see you guys in a future video.